Good evening, SPPS students, families, and community. I'm happy to spend some time with you this evening, and I want to thank you for tuning in, and also thank you for submitting so many great questions. I'll get through a number of those tonight, uh, but I think we'll have to find some additional ways to continue engaging with you to answer all of them. Let me please acknowledge the beginning of Ramadan tonight as well. And to all those who practice this observance as part of their faith, Ramadan Mubarak. I also want to let you know that a few times this week, COVID-19 takes on an even greater meaning for me. My office mate, otherwise known as my wife, Mary, works for the Minnesota Department of Health. Her duties have changed in response to COVID-19, and she is on the phone right now as a member of the state COVID-19 hotline. So you might hear some dueling voice volumes on this meeting. Our conversations have been incredible about both of our work, the way both of us work with our community, and we feel incredibly fortunate to have our health, employment, and a school district like SPPS for our junior son. By now, you have likely heard Governor Tim Wall's directive today to extend distance learning through the end of the 19, um, 20, 21, I'm sorry, 1920 school year. For many, this is not a surprise. It is a hard reality we are facing, but it is necessary. Governor Wallace has been a consistent leader in approaching the fight against COVID-19 in a scientific and pragmatic way. His background as an educator and as a current SPPS parent, I know this has been an agonizing decision for him to initially make and with the announced extension today. To our class of 2020 students, families and staff who enjoyed the time on our tradition of graduation, I'm truly sorry. Uh, we will develop a way to honor our seniors. I'll share a little bit more about that in just a bit. Uh, we'll also do the very best we can uh, to provide a special celebration. I also wanna mention the other transitions we are missing. The changes in individual children and young adults in a given year are incredible. And each one is such an important part of our work, whether it's students moving on to high school or leaving pre-K ready for kindergarten, becoming an eighth grader at one of our middle schools or an adult transition from focus beyond, independent and gainfully employed. These are all, all incredible markers and symbolic of the work that we do in our district. Our school communities are built on relationships and all of us miss these face-to-face -face daily interactions, not on a screen, to keep us on our toes, engaged in our work and inspired to support our students and our families. So hashtag SPPS in it together. Yeah, a little bit longer as a hashtag, I have to admit, but I've typed it in a few times with my thumbs. On March 15th, this hashtag, that was a Sunday, this hashtag was created from thin air. I feel incredibly fortunate for the technology commitment we have made in the past as a district that gave us a really great place to start from. Executive Order 2002 from Governor Walls stated that we had to do three things. We had to create a distance learning plan, we had to distribute meals, and provide childcare for St. Paul's essential workers. I can say with a great deal of confidence that no other district in the state of Minnesota and even our surrounding states have implemented this plan like we have in SPPS. I'm so proud of the great work and the efforts, um, people who have led with their hearts and leading what an education system can do when facing incredible challenges. And I'll share some of those things with you next. I wanna thank our teachers and our staff who have reached out to me personally, parents, families, community members, students who have reached out to me uh, to share um, how you're feeling and, and things that you're looking for, uh, things that are going well, and things that are not, not going so well. It's really important feedback and important for me to hear that. These are both complex and complicated times. Those two things don't go well together, but you know what? Our district is finding creative solutions to make sure that we're doing the very best that we can on a consistent basis. So here's an overview of a few things, and I can't cover it all, uh, but I do wanna give you a little bit of a, a dive into distance learning, how I've experienced it. Um, I want to thank GMENG science teacher, Dr. Bonnie Labs, for sharing with me how she created hands-on learning activity about density where students had to build an object and use their sink for it to flow. Owl science teacher, Dr. Megan Hall, gave our team a deep dive into Schoology, and she shared how it was being used and organized for learning material. A critical observation she made is that students who may be shy or even withdrawn in a traditional face-to-face -face setting in her class are signing on early and completing all of their work and sometimes even more. And there's also many new ways for students to demonstrate mastery of, of topics by completing assignments in various ways. Frost Lake special education teacher, Martin Odima, uh, he's a creative educator and using technology. Mr. Odima and his team have carefully displayed content in Schoology using colors 
large letters and voice activated links to ensure students can access learning. Mr. Odima also schedules 15 to 30 minute phone calls with his students on his caseload to ensure they are accessing assignments and prepared to succeed in them. Jackson Elementary EL teacher, Ella D. Songrath shares that it takes a lot more time to co-plan as an EL teacher with her co-teaching partners. She demonstrated just today, this morning with me, a book where her voice is the audio of read and it's guiding a lesson on personifications as a strategy that was used. She noted collaboration is key during this time more than ever. And it was so fun for me to watch students interact with her, interact with each other, and be really excited to share what they think about the information that was presented to them. Some other important things, the operations of our district, our director of transportation, Tom Burr, and the entire department, including our drivers. Um, our SPPS buses have been rerouted and loaded with essential supplies, including food to ensure our students can be successful in distance learning technology as well. Our director of nutrition services, Stacy Copen, and her entire nutrition team, they have completely redesigned their operations to purchase, prepare, package, and distribute more than, are you ready for this? 860,000 meals since March 18th throughout the entire city. Uh, that is a staggering number, 860,000 meals. And what I wanna say to you about this, members of our, our great community, is this is not the minimum and this is not the maximum. You see, the minimum is never acceptable uh, for people like Director Copen. Um, and also there's never a ceiling either. She wants to do more and more to make sure that she can design and support and create ways to support all of our students and, and families in the community, especially through with food. Um, so just an incredible, uh, remarkable feat that they have accomplished in, in, uh, in nutrition services. Our executive director of technology services, Idris Davis, uh, devices connection support, and repeat that over and over with more than 37,000 devices out into the community, uh, portable hotspots in some cases, making sure that, that our students and families can uh, have the device in hand, can interact with the internet, and then can engage with teachers and staff to get their information. Um, it's an ongoing process that we're going through. Uh, you know on our website, or you should know on our website, there's many different places for you to get critical support when it comes to technology, including the ability for you to drive to our, our uh, district services center for technology support, and a lot of tutorials online as well, including videos. Our paraprofessionals, I told our paraprofessionals early on, our entire staff, that I wanted to ensure that every single person in St. Paul Public Schools had a role of distance learning. And we're going to continue shaping what that role looks like as now we're fully implementing distance learning in our third week. Uh, it hasn't all been easy, and it didn't come with prepackaged instructions. Uh, this is the work that we do that's a very human, um, you know, a very relationship-based work in, in terms of education and support of our students. And now we have to do that in the confines of wherever we are. Uh, definitely makes for some different challenges, but one that we are not at all afraid to conquer. Our student support services, as you know, our students face a multitude and have a multitude of different needs that arise on a day-to-day -day basis. And to think about this period in time uh, where students are not just socially distancing, but in many cases, it's very isolating. Um, I know as adults in the community, to, to get out for that little bit of sunshine um, can, can make your day, but there's all sorts of things going on with the developmental stages of where our youth and our young adults are at. And we wanna make sure that we can continue to provide support. So we have continued to work with our uh, gracious community partners. We have been able to, in many cases, have tele support uh, that's available. Uh, it might not be the best, but it's a tool that we can use right now. And we will continue to adjust and make sure that we can meet the needs of uh, whatever challenges present themselves and we have the ability to. Also need to thank the City of St. Paul and Ramsey County, uh, just their collaborative partnership. It makes problem solving like this much easier uh, when there's a wide range of experts throughout the community who can come together and wrap our arms around kids and families. Um, I also wanna share with you that I received an email from a, a mother last week. Uh, she was awaiting food delivery at uh, Le Trois de Nord French Immersion. And unfortunately we ran out. A bit later, there was a knock on her door and Principal Luli Flores Hansen was there making a personal food delivery. Um, again, just touched my heart to hear that and doesn't surprise me either. Um, our educators, our leaders, uh, the members of our staff uh, will do whatever it takes to make sure that they can meet the needs of our students and do it with a smile and showing their great heart. Essential Kid Care is a collaborative um, process around 120 students are at 
Horace Mann, Rondo Complex, and Latois de Nord. Uh, currently, and our Director of Community Education, Tony Walker and his team, Supervisor of Student Health and Wellness, Mary Langworthy and her team, and our amazing custodial staff, in addition to the essential kid care staff, are there in a very safe way, ensuring that St. Paul's essential workers, and let's give them a round of applause right now, are able to uh, rely on them to care for their children while they serve our entire community. And uh, it's so gratifying that we can do this uh, for our community, uh, for those frontline health workers and many others. That list started as a few paragraphs and has expanded uh, through the governor's support and awareness of more critical and essential needs for in the community. And we're grateful that St. Paul Public Schools can be uh, a big part of that. Our HR and finance teams, of course, have had to completely mobilize and go remote uh, for 6,000 staff with uh, HR transactions and budget and money coming in and money going out all the time. You can imagine the complexities with that. Um, so I, I have to give them thanks. Uh, clerks, our, our secretaries, who many times are the first person you see, someone you likely know very well. Um, again, they're finding a whole new way to do this to do this work. We've welcomed 51 new students into the district through our Welcome Center since March 18th. Again, tremendous work to onboard and transition new students new to St. Paul Public Schools at these times. Just a couple more, our communications team, uh, giving relevant, timely information in as many languages as possible, as quickly as possible as well. I uh, want to thank them, thank them for putting on this session right here uh, and coordinating that. I really appreciate it. Our family engagement uh, team are, are serving the unique needs of, of our community partners, um, of our families, of the language needs of our families, and are finding ways to, uh, to work and partner with parents to make sure they can provide um, the support, the learning support to their students as well. Uh, finally, two more thanks. Our superintendent leadership team, again, approaching this work in service of students and staff in the community. Um, I've really appreciated watching um, how my team approaches this work in a different way. Uh, when you get on a call with 30 members, um, sometimes it's up to 30, but you get to see, or I get to see at least a different perspective about the nuances and detail of the work that they're doing, and especially in these times. I really appreciate uh, the leaders that I'm, I'm proud to serve with. And finally, our Board of Education. Uh, they continue to give me thoughtful direction. Um, and what I love about our board the most is that it's, it's always with endless encouragement and let's face it, we need that right now. We need that from each other. Also, I've really appreciated that from our, our Board of Education. Now I'd like to get into some questions for you. And I'm just going to toggle to the question screen here. And I'll get through as many of these as I can. We'll also find ways to write this. And, you know, depending on the feedback that we get, we can do more of these sessions as well. Uh, this is a great way for me to interact with you. And again, I'm proud that you're here tonight. Um, graduation for our class of 2020, our seniors. Um, school principals have been leading meetings with their graduation coordinators, district support staff, and soliciting feedback. Some of the recommendations that have been suggested still may fall outside of the acceptable social distancing, making it a difficult decision to make at this time. We may know more in June, but right now it makes those level of plans and those layer of plans re really tricky. Uh, principals have sought input from students, including our district student engagement and advancement board members, our SEED. And I'd like you to know that if you have additional feedback, please contact your child's principal. They are the go-to person uh, for that committee that's come together. I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get a plan out soon so that families can under, and students can understand what it is that we wanna do to honor them for graduation. And I also think it's relevant that we look at other ways that we can honor our seniors, not just as a school, but as an entire community, an entire city. Uh, this is a time where, where they need us. Um, they all need us, but our seniors really need us. This is a, um, a just a, a really too bad and, and unfortunate that, um, that our seniors have to end their high school career, their SPPS career for many um, in distance learning. Um, I received an email from an upset mother yesterday and was able to was able to connect with her on the phone. She expressed fr frustration on how distance learning was going for a child. Um, in general, and it was really good feedback for me. And I need you all to know this. It was a good reminder for me that not all of our kids are the same. Um, I can make decisions and I can tell people what to do, but if I don't have the individual um, knowledge of what unique needs there might be for our students, whether it's their grade level, uh, whether it's the class that they're taking, whether it's the level uh, that they're achieving at, uh, we need to think about all those individual um, things and, and different circumstances right now at this time so we can provide differentiated support to the best of our abilities. 
I realize uh, that parents many times are working uh, right from the home um, all day long, making it very difficult to sit side by side with your child and monitor and help and assist uh, them with their work as well. Uh, so it was a good, it was a really good conversation for me to have. And I just want to encourage you that uh, to reach out to our schools, if not to me, to your principal, to the, the caring staff there, they want to make sure that they can, they can help and they can assist. Uh, what about summer school? Summer school, if you didn't know, a uh, fun fact, around 17,000 students in some way, shape or form are enrolled in some sort of summer programming, bigger than most districts um, around the country uh, in terms of our summer school enrollment. So it is, a, it is an incredible program. Um, right now, we're in a position where we have to wait just a little bit to see if the Minnesota Department of Education is going to provide any further guidance on uh, how they would like to see us approach summer school. We um, absolutely will have the opportunity for credit recovery. Uh, that's something I feel very strongly about, making sure that we use every bit of time we can uh, to allow our scholars to finish their high school requirements and graduate. So I, I will let you know that we will be getting out additional information uh, about summer school. Um, the question might be, will it be online or will it be uh, back in our schools? Right now, we're gonna plan that it's going to be online. Um, that's that's just how, how we're going to plan. So when we get you know, further information about what type of courses, when they meet, uh, what those expectations will be, we'll be sure to communicate that to you. That also takes me into school next year. What is school going to look like in September or August when many staff start coming reporting back to St. Paul Public Schools? Well, I can tell you that right now, today, that there's a little bit of stabilization, if you can believe that. We're in distance learning. You know, we're at a time in the year where people are where they're supposed to be, and we're doing this. Uh, but to understand what happens at the end of the school year in a district the size of ours and what happens at the start of a school year in a district the size of ours, there's some extra complexities with those transitions. Uh, with students moving, new families coming in, with staff moving, new buildings, new positions. Uh, so there's a lot to work out. And what I can share with you today, much like what the governor shared at 2 o'clock, is we really don't know. But I'm planning in this way. There are three different options. One is that we are back in school um, fully, you know, with, with social distancing and guidelines, but uh, we're back face to face. Um, whether that's the reality or not, I think we have to at least have that as a possibility. The other one would be that we are just like we are now. We are in full distance learning, um, meaning that uh, just like we're meeting now, just like your children, um, and member, kids in the community have been uh, meeting the last three weeks. That's what it would look like in September. I also think there is some room for a hybrid approach where we are using social distancing, where we are using uh, strict guidelines to regulate the number of students and staff and community members who are able to come into their buildings. Um, I look at this as maybe more of a college-like schedule uh, where it isn't everyone in the same class at the same time doing the same thing. There's a way to stagger it out so we can have a little bit of a blend. And again, these aren't things, these aren't indetermined. I don't have um, the final picture of what that would look like. I just want you to know as a community that I will be as adaptive as possible in trying to um, assemble what a typical school experience is like. Um, to a large extent, we have learned many things with technology these first few weeks. So knowing that we can ramp that up and knowing that we can deliver in a digital way, although we have a long way to go, and, there, and there's a lot of, of great work to improve upon, um, we know that we can do it. And when that decision will be made, as the governor said today as well, um, doesn't, you know, he didn't list out a timeline for when he's going to make that final decision. Um, going to continue to monitor it, uh, look at the science of it, and, and as you could tell, if you were able to hear the discussion from yesterday, uh, Minnesota, and we should all be proud of it, are really leading in, in, the, in the approach to, uh, to, to test and to find out what can we do uh, to defeat, defeat COVID-19. So I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, but we have to have contingency plans as well. Uh, grading right now, SPPS is, is following secondary grading calendar for quarter four reporting uh, that's on our website. Um, final grading requirements are also subject to change. So they could change a little bit just based on some of the guidelines I continue to get from the Department of Education. Uh, for a while, those changes or those updates were coming every day. They've about every three days or so right now, we're getting further documentation from the Department of Education. And much of it's based on uh, myself or my colleagues or, or school staff reaching out to the department and giving them feedback. 
Uh, so I've been very appreciative of both the governor and the Department of Education uh, for their willingness to, to be learners right along with us as, as we're in these unprecedented times. Um, report cards will come out at this time. We're planning to use the marks from the spring report card for the end of the year report card uh, for students. Teachers would have the option to add comments about distance learning and families will receive an electronic copy of the end of your report card. Um, iPads and when will those be collected? <clears throat> I received that question. Um, I'm not going to collect iPads this year um, with the exception of seniors or students who are leaving the district. Um, I believe it is incredibly important for us to maintain connectivity, a connection with our students and with our families. And right now, as, as we we're relying on this device, uh, for me, it's a way for us to ensure that we can communicate. Um, so I want our students, all of our students, to, to keep their iPads through the summer, uh, whether that means we have seamless enrollment into some summer learning of some sort, that would be great, whether it means that, that students keep it and roll into the um, uh, 2021 school year, whether it's one of the three uh, scenarios that I mentioned or options that I mentioned, um, I want our students to keep their iPads. Um, as it relates to school materials, we've got a lot of work to do in that regard. Um, that means staff getting back into their buildings in a safe way, of course, identifying their own personal belongings, and also identifying uh, student personal belongings, and finding a way for us to have safe retrieval of those items. Now, the good news there is that we can use some of our transportation for door-to-door -door where possible, if it's identifiable and we know who it belongs to. And we can also stagger it out a little bit knowing that no one's going to be back in school, um, at least through the school year, so we don't have to have everybody come back on the same day, as long as we can have a supervised approach to uh, making sure the families and students can access their schools, we'll find a way to make sure that those uh, materials get back in their, in their right hands. Attendance has come up quite a few times. <clears throat> so what is my position on attendance? In fact, I just got a call uh, because uh, the junior in, in the house here forgot to do his prompt yesterday. So we had a quick conversation about that and, and yes, uh, he forgot. But compulsory attendance to me, um, compulsory attendance laws were not written for distance learning. And I wanna be very clear when I state this, attendance right now is really dictated by the stay at home order. Our students are where they're supposed to be uh, that by the order and that's at home. Um, distance learning and attendance to me is about connecting accessing, engaging, and supporting, and looking for ways that we can ensure that our students on a regular, consistent, and scheduled basis are able to connect with their device to their teacher, school support staff, whomever it might be at their school, access information, engage in learning, and if any of that isn't happening, or if it's happening at a level that's so great that we want to do more, that there's a way for us to support that individual learner. And I can tell you that day-to-day, um, you know, we have some analytics to show how many are connecting and for how long. Uh, it, 100% is the, is the bar. Uh, and there's only one bar. It's 100%. So if there are issues along connecting, accessing, engaging, or supporting, we want to know so that we can hit that 100%. Um, but again, we will not be looking to punish students or take consequences. Um, you know, attendance, was, attendance laws were written for these times. We want to make sure we're connecting, accessing, engaging, and supporting. Uh, let's see, scrolling down here. Uh, Crossroads Elementary Science and Montessori School are in a year-round calendar. So there may be some uh, accommodations that we have to make uh, to make sure the state sets minimum uh, amount of hours and days that schools have to be in session. And it's different for elementary and secondary and uh, Crossroads having a different calendar. We are going to be bringing some information before the Board of Education uh, for us to consider if there will be a calendar change for Crossroads. Um, in terms of some have asked about the end of the school year and when will that end, you know, we had anything but a typical school year in terms of days that we missed for a lot of reasons. Um, so I'm determining right now what our best options are going to be. Uh, and until I communicate, just go by our calendar. Um, and and I, trust me, I will make sure that I'm communicating as quickly as I can and doing it in a way uh, that is the least um, bothersome uh, to you and trying to establish some regular routines. Um, grades, I've heard some rumbling, there were some grades might be pass or fail. We're really looking at all options. I do not want any student punished as a result of distance learning. Um, so there's arguments all over. Some want letter grades, some want pass or fail. Until just a few days ago, the NC2A 
uh, was ruling that a, a pass grade was equivalent of a D, uh, which brought a, a concern to many students in our district. So there were a lot of things for us to, to consider and then reconsider and continue to reconsider. Um, in the end, we wanna make sure that we're clear with you, clear with our students and allow as much flexibility as possible. Um, I know that the way third quarter ended uh, wasn't ideal. So we wanna make sure that our teachers and students and families can go back without recreating uh, lost instruction, but have a fair way um, to grade students and moving forward as well. So continue to look on, on our website and we'll continue to get updates out about grading. Um, there were some summer programs that were out there, some more fun at Groveland was one. That's a City of St. Paul program. Um, again, we'd love to offer um, everything that we can, but with our um, guidelines, obviously that's been a little bit difficult. I did wanna cover this one. There've been some feedback about the level of rigor, the amount of work. Um, it's too much for some, it's not enough, or it's not any uh, for others. So try to address this in, in the best way possible. We're in week three right now. So some of our teachers had to ease into the technology to make sure that there was connectivity and that it was going to be consistent. Uh, the second week we introduced some tools like Google Meets to um, allow for some face-to-face -face, um, interaction. And I think what you'll see is things will begin to pick up. Um, I wanted to be very clear, first and foremost, to our staff and not overwhelm them. Um, for many of our staff, this is and continues to be uh, a major difference in the way uh, that they're meeting the needs of students. And even though we've had technology, we haven't been forced to use it um, in this way. And I wanted to, to be sure that we could provide staff the time they needed uh, to do it in a respectful and reasonable way and to make sure that they were equipped to, to meet the needs of our students in that way as well. If there continue to be issues around that, please communicate with your school. This is, these are great points of feedback for our, our principals and the teachers themselves. And I know that we can work in great partnership together like we always do. Um, summer school, I addressed that. If schools aren't reopening for the rest of the year, so they're planning for a sense of closure, safe and socially distant way. I know these rising um, students from fifth to sixth and some of those other really important ones, um, we're really going to seek the guidance of the State Department of Health. And, you know, as of right now, we won't be allowed to do any face-to-face -face large um, celebrations or end of the year parties like that. And I'm really sorry for that. Those are really important times, but we can perhaps find some ways to do it. Uh, not a full-fledged uh, commencement graduation, uh, but perhaps we can learn um, how to support our, our students and our families and, and do it in a new and a different way as well. Uh, so I urge you to continue to stay in touch with your building principals, and I'll make sure that as the Division of Schools, we're talking about ways to do that. Just take a few more here. I'm talking about ways to honor seniors beyond graduation. I, I talked about that. Please reach out to your principals if you have specific ideas. Again, summer school. Assuming there are no, this is a great question. I'm really grateful somebody asked this. Assuming there's no return to school this year, is there a way for families of seniors to donate money and lunch accounts to the meal services deliveries that are happening while middle or while school is closed? Yes, families can donate the remaining lunch account money to other families. Uh, please go to account balances on our webpage. Um, SPPS.org and, and go to the Nutrition Services webpage and where it says um, account balances, there is a way to transfer. And please reach out to um, our Nutrition Services staff. They'd be glad to assist you in doing that and really grateful uh, that somebody provided that. One more question here and then our time is going to be up. Um, we are working on making sure that apps can be accessible that are there to assist students. I know there are some things that we still have to continue to work out, uh, but we will definitely do that. Some of these are repeats. So I'm just trying to get to some. You submit a lot of questions and I'm really glad. How much time should children be spending on their assignments? You know, this, this is going to be a little bit different and this is where it gets really challenging from us, um, you know, to to set minimums and things of that nature when uh, both teachers and the way that they do it and students and the way that they access and engage with information, it's going to be different for everyone. Um, what I don't wanna do is, is overwhelm our, our staff. And we need to make sure, I need to make sure that I'm providing them both the time and the guidance uh, that they have what they need in order to uh, fulfill their obligations. Um, I'm hopeful that we can add um, um, enrichment activities and, and students can have other ways of engaging 
uh, but I know right now establishing a regular routine for feedback between teacher and student um, is, is a really complex thing. Uh, you know, and especially if if uh, students are secondary students have multiple teachers, um, and that's not to mean it's any easier for our elementary teachers uh, who are with you know their group of students all day or for chunks of the day. Um, you know, I want to end with this: that uh, I'm I'm here for you. Um, we're we're in this together. We really are stronger together. Um, I had a chance uh, a few weeks ago at a committee of the board meeting to um, share what I thought would have been a great um, headline in the, in the newspaper. Imagine that um, me suggested and, and they listened to me. Well, I said it three times and didn't get it, but it was something along these lines. SPPS superintendent incredibly proud of the implementation of distance learning and thanks staff and the community for embracing these really challenging times. Um, I can't say enough about um, how, how proud I am of, of, of our staff, um, how thankful I am for your great support, students for your, well, parents too, your, your patience. Um, I, I know it's, a, it's just a really hard time for, for all of us to be in this situation, um, but I also want to set high expectations. I don't want to just do distance learning, um, just like with attendance. I don't want to, you know, 100% is the goal, and I want us to be great not at distance learning. I want us to be great at engaging our students, encouraging them, um, filling them with hope and opportunities for their futures, and making sure that everyone knows that there will be another side to this. Um, we won't be in socially distant forever. We won't be in distance learning forever. There will be another side to this, and our goal, as always, is to be better. Uh, so I want to thank you for your time. I want to uh, share with you my commitment to continue to engage, uh, depending on the feedback from this session, perhaps we can do this more often. Um, and I just wanna thank you in general, SPPS, and we're in this together. Thanks everyone. Have a great night.